Hello there, welcome to Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 Channel. You can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira. Is where you can find me across all my social. In this particular session, we dive into an interview that looks at... Uh, uh, youth empowerment, youth economical empowerment, and in studio I am joined by none other than Farhia Jama. She is the founder of Holby Training Solution, and she'll be telling us more about what uh, Holby Training Solution is all about and how impactful it is to the young people and especially the marginalized community uh, in in our country. So I would like her to introduce herself way better. Because I believe you have a couple of other titles. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michelle. My mm -hmm. name is Farhia Jama. I am a social entrepreneur, an author of your entrepreneurship journey. I am the co-founder of Holby Training Solutions. And in my background, apart from being an entrepreneur, I am a lawyer and a tax specialist by profession. So um, how Holby started, um, we realized that there are so many people who want to do entrepreneurship in Kenya and in Africa, but they're struggling to get the fundamental skills. So we had a couple of people in the marginalized communities who are non-literate and they were struggling to just find a way they can put meals on their tables. And what we did, we started a pilot project to help these communities learn entrepreneurship skills and business support services like legal and tax in their own languages, in Kiswahili, in the Sheng that they understand and make it simpler for them because everyone knows how to to earn the money, but they just don't have the right skills. Oh, right. So that's how actually um, Holby started. Just started right? Yeah, and then now once we had like 12 people enrolling and uh, actually we were called by a community. At that time I was in law school. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't know it will work out. I was just trying because I was uh, tired of how communities are very dependent on begging or asking for help. So we were like, how can I empower this person right. to be able to get that 200 bob or 500 bob a mm -hmm. day and mm -hmm. survive okay. without asking for donations or all that. So that's how it started. We started just training them and then I knew it might fail or it might succeed. Mm -hmm. So I just tried it out and then these ladies who I trained in, in Park Road became, um, they were street ladies. They were just begging. Sometimes they were dependent on um, the mosque and stuff. So I started with my own community first. Because so you started this, way uh, back at home? Yes, I had to start way back at home because, I mean, if I'm starting out something, I need to help my people first. Absolutely. Yes. And I have to go home and really help my people. Then now, if it works out, then I can, you can reach, reach out to, to the, the whole public. community, yeah, to the public. Yeah, yeah. Before we get into details on yeah. what whole between actually does yeah. allow me to take us back to where the passion of entrepreneurship it, where it all started because <laughs> Faria you're very young mm -hmm. very yes. young and looking at your bio and a couple of things that you've achieved uh, at this particular age so yeah. take us back to where the passion where it all began so uh, my passion began when I was 18 years old um, I was just at home and I had finished school in 2012 high school so i was just thinking how can i get extra um pocket money because you know um when you're from high school your parents stop now giving that pocket money because they're like now you're at home you're back from school yeah. there's nothing you're doing and most Why high do schoolers don't think about starting a business yes <laughs> and that's the thing so for me actually mm -hmm. i didn't start thinking about the business i was just thinking what are the skills that i have that i can use then sell those things then now earn money so what i started with i started selling pizzas and cakes at, at our gate okay. back there in at home in Langata. Then our neighbors used to buy the pizzas. At that time, Pizza Inn had not come in Kenya. So pizza was, learning pizza, um, making pizza how was to make just, pizza. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. how to make pizza was just a big thing then. So people liked it and the mandazis and that's why you'll find m most of my friends used to like the food mm -hmm. I create or mm -hmm. I make. So I used to sell that and then once I uh, it started gaining traction, the cakes, the 50 bob, I used to get the 100 bob, all, the, all that now started making me think like what I can do a business. Mm -hmm. So at that time, I didn't know what fundamental skills I needed. I was just doing it for the fun of it at 18. Mm -hmm. 
so I started the baking business, then it grew, then at la I, got, I got tired of it. And also people used to take advantage, you know, they'd make you bake a whole cake and then they wouldn't pay you. Or um, a neighbor will come and then they eat, but then now they haven't paid you. So friends will come and friends, say it's my yeah. birthday. Yes, and then friends will benefit, they come, <laughs> it's my birthday, you make for them and then you don't get the return. Oh, yeah. So um, my parents were already frustrated, They're like you're really using a lot of our resources, but then you're not making profits okay so i left that business then um i still went to venture into other businesses i tried i was trying my tattoo business because there was Matatu. a neighbor uh, yeah uh -huh. there's a neighbor who was having this it's not matatu as such the tour buses okay so i asked him how much do you how can i rent your tour bus because he was thinking i'm so crazy at 18 who, who wants to do that i told him uh, i've done a lot of businesses can i just try it out but i'm not sure then I actually didn't venture fully into it because I was so scared. But I also did chicken business and the and, uh, farm business. Okay. At that time, um, my mom was a bit sick. And since you're a firstborn, I had to take up roles, uh, responsibilities. And I have to continue with what she used to do before. So at that time, she had left for um, surgery in India. And then now... For me, I had to run the business. I didn't know how. I actually made, uh, saw some books I used to calculate all those amount of chickens I used to sell. Then uh, I, I ac actually, out of that project management of my mom's business, then my own businesses, then I learned a lot of skills. I failed in a lot, but then again, that's how I kept on doing more businesses. So I never stopped okay. after that. Uh, there's a couple of businesses, so actually. Yes. So before now, we got to Hobby Training Solutions. So how yeah. many business in counting? Right now, we can look um, back and seven businesses. Seven of them. Seven of them. <laughs> wow. Before I joined, actually, university. So you can imagine, okay. I even within university, I was learning low, uh, but I was still doing business. Okay. Going yes. back, uh, let me take you back. In that environment whereby you're starting these particular businesses, Yeah. What was the relationship with your parents? Did you have, uh, your mother is a businesswoman clearly, yes. out of the chicken business. Yeah. Uh, what about your father? Was there like a supportive system whereby they held your hand and uh, they showed you the way when it comes to business? Um, so when I was starting business, um, they weren't supportive. Actually, they were, um, I, I didn't have a supportive environment. My parents were business people. My dad is a business person. My mom is a business person. But then again, I wasn't getting that support from them because they thought I'll drop out from school. So they were like, this girl, if she starts getting money, she will never go to study or she'll never learn anything. Mm -hmm. So actually they were against all my business the first time. They were actually blocking each and every business. So they will go, to, I'm going to this client, they're like, don't buy from my daughter. Because <laughs> literally, then I'm like, why are you guys doing this to me? And like, you won't go to school. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. We want you to go to school first, learn, and then you can do all the businesses later on. Then okay. I was like, okay, fine, I'll go to school. But then I used to do um, secret businesses without their knowledge. So they found out when I was in fourth year that I actually used to still run the, run the, the, business. Yeah, the business in school. All right. So... Um, now you've graduated, uh, you're studying law. Yes. So you're a lawyer by profession. Yes. What was the reaction now after yeah. graduation? You, you're a holder of a law degree and you're yet you're not practicing law. Yes, now you, I'm actually practicing. You're, not pra oh, you're practicing, of course, in business and all that, yeah. in a different aspect. No, no, actually, in the morning, so my, my businesses, are, it was like a side hustle. Okay. So in the morning, I, I work in a law firm. All right. So I am a lawyer in the morning, in, in the, the evening, I'm a business, business lady. <laughs> what about now? Yeah, I still do that. Okay, mm, yeah. so what was the reaction then? Yeah. So the reaction was one, um, once you've done law, law comes with a big prestige. This kind of ego. A certain status st now. St status in the, in the society. Mm -hmm. So the first time, okay, my parents now started supporting the businesses later, but then again the community or the people I used to meet or the lawyers I used to meet, they were like, um, will you become a, a lawyer or a business lady? Um, are you really confused or something? Um, why? W so uh, a couple of friends were making fun. Um, doing business and you're a lawyer looks like you're selling onions on the streets mm -hmm. or doing um, other activities on the side. How will you be a professional? And also how will you be able to, to juggle, balance, balance, and balance and ba yes. the two? And then I, I actually, when they actually used to mock me, 
it made me now more confident to run it and still continue because the law firm I work for I, and I thank the boss I have he he actually incorporated my business the law firm I work for <laughs> so I told him okay you know I run a business yeah allow me to work for you and also so I negotiated my time in the law firm so allow me to work for you in the morning but in the afternoon I need to leave <laughs> I need to run my businesses as I need to do so my boss was accommodative of that because actually he knew how Holby grew, okay. how Holby was nothing at first in his, you know. So that actually really helped. I got mentorship from the same law firm. That's why I stick to the same law firm that I work in because they knew how I grew in business and also in the legal field. And they actually give you a space where you can actually, you know, grow your business. Yes, so it allowed me right to now. grow my business. And so that's the kind of um, future uh, employers that we need who are accommodative to learn that this person has has like multifaceted skills so you can't lock them from doing other side hustle just because they work for you okay yes Gemma I'd like you to find out uh, from the just the story from your parents and how they tried to block so that you can focus in school mm -hmm. and now you're also in uh, in a workspace and you had the confidence to talk to your boss and be like give me time to also run my business mm -hmm. what drove you from day one when you you know from the parent aspect were still pushing for what you want what was that uh, that pushed you towards just uh, still following your passion into business because you see first I actually really loved entrepreneurship and and that love for something you know the way you have like someone you really love you get so addicted to them it's the same way I'm so addicted to the business so at every time I really fall mm -hmm. I remember why I started remember why you started yeah and, and and it hasn't been a smooth ride sometimes I used to cry sometimes I used to be like why is the society against I actually got into depression at some point but then you needed to I needed to pick up my pieces and the say okay listen I fought hard for this thing I fought against my parents I fought against my friends I fought against all these people not to give up on it so even when I finished law school actually I had stopped doing it for a while because I was seeing like the whole society was really against it mm -hmm. then I picked up later after I finished law school and said okay I know um, so many people were against it but let me pick up the pieces and start afresh yeah i know the support is not there but the thing is you need to learn um to live within yourself to accept something from within without um looking for affirmation from people mm -hmm. and that what that is actually what pushed me all through because now i'm seeing uh, i need to develop myself i need to develop my business and if i believe it can happen then it can happen then later on is when now the people like my parents now started accepting it because they started seeing results they started seeing what change i was bringing they started getting their friends telling them listen your daughter is really doing well actually don't stop her from doing it she she has helped my business so a lady was approaching my parent and said if it weren't for your daughter i wouldn't have done a business so my parents are like what <laughs> what have you been doing <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so um so until you push yourself people wouldn't sing to your song mm. you need to go uh, yes it might be hard it might be but you need to prove yourself so all all this time i needed to prove to always prove that my business is working i am you know i'm doing something good. oh so before you even ask for help or any sort of investment it all starts from you yes it has to start from you yeah. all right so what are solutions when it comes to the problems uh, in the society in the market space mm. what what is the solution that holby training training is mm. offering into the market so problem um, holby, yeah sorry mm. uh, holby's training solution is a social venture that is in trying to incorporate a platform where all entrepreneurs are able to get the business support services that they need and this is not only for kenya it's actually going across africa mm. and how it started it's because we're trying to redesign the entrepreneurship journey because i came to realize when i trained people in malawi and nigeria and ghana all of them had the same challenges us as kenyans have so when I was uh, developing this thing, I was looking at if Africa is facing the same challenges, they have a close mindset around entrepreneurship because the schools that we went to or the education systems have trained us to always just think about jobs, 
not get out of our, our comfort zones and create an innovative product or go to entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is seen as for losers. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to show that I am also educated, but I am also doing business. I have the all the education, the legal, the tax, but entrepreneurship is something that people can venture into right from high school, right from university. Even at that time you're in school, you can still do your business. Mm -hmm. That is what I, the song I wanted to sing so that people can know that entrepreneurship is not for losers. Entrepreneurship is for every educated person. And you don't need to be unemployed just because you don't want to get creative or innovative. So that is the kind of redesigning um, the entrepreneurship world that we're thinking about. And Holby is trying to create that hub for everyone, that hub for entrepreneurs. So providing skills, it's so all about skill training. Yes. So we provide skills, we provide the community mm -hmm. because an entrepreneur needs support. Absolutely. I lacked support. Mm -hmm. So I created the support that they needed. Mm -hmm. And also apart from support, you also need other other um, support services like legal you need a lawyer standby for you you need a tax specialist standby for you so that is the kind of community we're developing right. it's and not I only skills training okay it's that support it's all that rounded. An yeah an all-rounded platform where um, an entrepreneur feels at home okay yes. if i need a lawyer i can get I a can lawyer I can get mar marketing there's, yeah, there's a, a person who will help you handle marketing, marketing. Yes. Right. is it okay if i say that it's a space where i can get uh, coaching for my business yes you can get coaching you can get support you can get um standby consultants mm -hmm. to guide you all through so what we do we walk through the whole journey with you all right. That's all. That's how simplified we can make it. Okay. Yes. So let's look at a couple of courses uh, that the company offers and the programs. Yes. So some of the courses that we offer, one, we offer entrepreneurship skills, the fundamental of entrepreneurship. We also offer investment skills. You see, you've gotten money from the business. Now you need to sustain and maintain the wealth, right? So you need to learn how to invest. Mm -hmm. We also uh, offer financial literacy skills. Then we also offer tax legal digital marketing so all these skills are all the skills that um, an entrepreneur needs so from soft skills to technical skills to vocational skills so vocational can come maybe you want to do um, manufacturing maybe you want to create uh, you want to learn how to make shoes how to make tomatoes so we have experts who are already ahead who have done the business coming to help you all right. Yes. A very uh, fundamental question is: I believe you work with a team. Yes. How credible are they when it comes to offering these particular skills, and who vets them? So um, we actually vet them uh, based on have you tried it something before? Because oh. we only hire people who are multi multifaceted in the skills that they have and they have implemented. So most of the people out there, they only have the theory. Like you're a lawyer, you just have the theory, you've never practiced before. So we cannot hire someone like that. We only hire people who have two to three skills. And, and the other thing is you need to have done business before or you need to have an idea of how a business works mm -hmm. so that you're not misleading an entrepreneur. That's how we, we actually select Oh, wow. the, our, our, our consultants. Okay, so if a client, what is the process like if I come approach you that I want to start a business when it comes to probably um, making soaps, yeah. bar soap? Mm. So what is the process like? What are you going to? What is the process going to look like yeah. when I approach you? So um, when you approach us, you go through uh, an assessment first. Mm -hmm. First, um, the ta it's called a talent assessment. So we have a partnership with a company that does talent assessment. They give you a report in where you're strengths are what you're good at and which kind of business you might venture into if you already have a business idea then now we help you grow your business ideas we actually help you fill in the forms then now we enroll you into now the cost that actually we 
think is fit for you mm -hmm. with your permission mm -hmm. and then now after that we take them if you're we, we have two blocks of people mm -hmm. we have the machinani programs and the other programs okay. so our machinani programs are only focused for the marginalized community so if we find out you're coming from a marginalized community you know a non-literate who does not know how to read and uh, and write so we take you to this program in this program it's more different because you have to go through counseling mindset changing and you know we have to change your whole thinking then now for this other uh, entrepreneur who has the ideation who has the ideas or has already learned or, or has gone through school then now it's easier for them to just enroll for a course then we assign um, a trainer and this trainer or a consultant will be with them on that course then we offer one month coaching one month coaching is we enable you to explore the business that you've started then we give you a chance to come back to us mm -hmm. so that because an entrepreneur makes a lot of mistakes so they come back and they're like okay i did this but i don't know if it actually worked out what will you think about it then now we incorporate you now to the community of other entrepreneurs who have gone through the training who you can sell your products to and network with them what i like is the aspect of how considerate your team was and yeah. coming up with